All right, boys, here we go. FM22 is just around the corner. People are starting to think about save ideas, and I have got eight teams for you to consider for FM22. Now, I've done this over the last couple of years. I've done it for FM19, FM20, so I've tried to not to include teams that I've used in previous videos for this. Let me know right now down in the comments who you're going to be managing for FM22. Beta, long-term, short-term saves, I want to know. Put it down in the comments. Let's get into it. I also have a two game discount links in the description. Use code FMTREK to get 10% off at checkout. Let's get into today's video. Eight teams to manage across eight different nations. All right, boys. So the first club we're going to be looking at today is Derby County in England. Now, championship club, Wayne Rooney in charge. They've got players like Steve Jagielka and Ravel Morrison in the ranks. But apart from that, You've got a lot of work to do. Long gone are the days of Brian Clough, Jim Smith and even Steve McLaren. The club is on the verge of administration. The money is going to be tight. However, there is an excellent youth academy. The stadium's big and there's just the potential for you to do better than Wayne Rooney. And over a long period of time, turn it round. I think the first couple of seasons will be really tough for you but if you can get past them no relegations perhaps maybe a buyout as the owner is definitely looking to sell so that may work in your favour and I think it is a definite sleeping giant a difficult sleeping giant but definitely a sleeping giant. Bring back the days of Clough, Smith and even Steve McLaren. All right, now we're moving over to France. I think France is potentially going to be a popular destination for a lot of FM22 players, not only just to play as PSG, but I think to find teams capable of taking over PSG. Now, I have gone for Bordeaux. On the verge of bankruptcy in the summer until they were taken over by a controversial former owner of Lille, Gerard Lopez, you've got a bit of a clean slate. I'm not sure how the finances are going to be in terms of the club and the debt because I'm not quite sure how FM are going to see that with Lopez. He did have a, a bit of a dodgy spell leaving massive debts with Lille when he left a couple of years ago. So it'd be interesting to see how that's set up for you. They've sold their star player Yassine Adli as well in the summer. You have got him on loan from Milan, but it's only a season. You've got veterans in Lauren Koscielny and Jimmy Barand. A lot of work in the squad needs to be done. You are a million miles of competing with PSG, but nice facilities, new stadium, big stadium, long-term project to try and get Bordeaux, the wine capital of the world, back on the footballing map. Okay, so that is Derby County and Bordeaux. We are now moving to Italy and it is SSC Bari. Bari have spent 30 of their 113 years in the Italian top flight but have not been seen since 2011 and the last 10 years have seen the club have their third bankruptcy in 2014 and then in 2018 the club was excluded from Serie B and have had to start again in Serie D. The rights to the Phoenix Club of Bari were acquired by Napoli owner Aurelio De Laurentiis and his company Filmaro. Now Aurelio has actually passed on the chairmanship to his son Luigi De Laurentiis so you've got a potential bit of money there to start with the club is in the third tier now in the C division it's a regionalized three I think there's three divisions a little bit of work to be done home games though played at the Stadio San Nicola a wonderful 58,000 seat stadium built for Italian night in an iconic stadium you've got the potential of creating something massive. Now, Barry, over the past 30 years, have seen some incredible players. Um, Antonio Cassano came you through the youth ranks. So did Lorenzo Lamoruso. But they've also had, in the 90s, had players like Robert Yanni, Zamavia Boban, David Platt. They've also had Gianluca Zambrotta, Marco De Vaio, and Leonardo Bonucci. So they've had some fantastic talent. There's not that talent in the monks the ranks at the moment you have former Leeds United striker Mirko Antonucci leading the line and the squad has an average age according to transfer market has an average age of over 30 so yeah there's a lot of kind of journeyman players in there but they have had attendances pre-covid in the third and even in the fourth tier of over between 10 and 20,000 so there's potential there of getting money in I don't I don't think there'll be any debt with the club so you'll be starting maybe debt free a chance to give Barry the opportunity to get back in Serie A. A major rebuild is needed, but can you take the Galetti back where they belong in Serie A 
And maybe, you know, maybe call yourself Antonio Cassano. Bring the legend back to Barry. Okay, now we are heading to South America and it is River Plate. Now, I know everybody has heard of River Plate, but if you're wanting to dip your toes into the crazy world of South American football for the first time in Football Manager, then I think River is a really good save to start. The most successful Primera Division club with 36 titles. However, the last coming seven years ago, Back in 2014, their biggest rivals, Boca, are closing in as well on 34 titles. So you've got a bit of work there. Boca has seemed to be the strongest team in the country at the moment. So you need to make sure that Boca don't take over your record of 36 titles. Now, I think the little carrot to the save is bringing through youth and progressing them into the first team. No doubt having to sell them on at some point to European clubs, but that will help you balance the books. Obviously, you'll want to go for the, the national title, but also Copa Libertadores as well, playing against the big teams from Brazil and in Argentina. So that will be quite exciting. The youth academy is tremendous. Just just let me reel off the, the names of players that have come through the River Academy. No bigger than Alfredo Di Stefano, Pablo Ema, Claudio Canigia, Fernando Cavagnini, Hernan Crespo, um, Ramadel Falcao, Gonzalo Higuain, Javier Mascarano, Ariel Ortega, one of my favourites, and even Javier Saviola. All of them have come through the Youth Academy, so, and yeah, the players will, steep, will keep dripping through. You've got to get them promoted into the first team, get them playing well. I imagine you won't have much money to play with in terms of budget, so it's a bit of a youth development challenge, I think, and stop Boca becoming the most successful Argentinian football club. All right, we're moving back into Europe and we're moving into Spain to Racing Club Santander. Now, in the mid to late 90s and through the noughties, Racing Santander were La Liga regulars. However, in 2021, you find them languishing in the third tier of Spanish football. And if you've played in this level before, the third tier is notoriously very hard to get out of. Racing Santander have never won a major trophy, have only played in Europe just once. However, they did beat Manchester City and draw with PSG back in 2008 of the Europa League. The budget will be tight. The road will be long and difficult as you attempt to take down the La Liga monopoly of the Madrids and Barcelona. But just look at the badge. Look at the kit. I think a really exciting challenge this year for FM22. OK, we're moving back to South America and a more difficult challenge. We're moving to Brazil and it's Chapacoense. Now, everyone is familiar with the plane crash tragedy back in 2016. And since then, even though the tragedy took the lives of 19 players, the club performed miracles to finish 8th and 14th in 2017 and 2018. They did, however, suffer relegation in 2019, but bounced straight back in 2020. However, in this season's 2021 Serie A Championship, things are looking bad for Chapacoense and they are rooted to the bottom of the table and it looks inevitable that they will be suffering relegation again. Can you take the eternal champions back into continental competition, back into Sudi, the Sudi Americana, the competition that they never got to complete in 2016? Can you get them to lift it and pick up the club's first major trophy? Now, there is about... Potentially 90 games to play in the season. So this is, once again, a perfect opportunity for you to, to bring youngsters through. You've got about 40 league games. You've got state championships. You've got Brazilian Cups. And then, depending on where you finish, you'll have maybe continental games in the Copa de Libertadores or the, or the competition below, which is a Sudamericana. Big challenge. Fantastic badge. Fantastic story, I think, for you to give them a little bit of history positive history and also you can pick up a shirt pretty cheap on m m Direct. Okay, back into Europe and this is a bit of a common one I think but I think a really exciting challenge. It's Hertha de Berlin. Um, they've started the 2021-22 season terribly. They'd be smashed by Bayern 5-0. They did pick up a win at the weekend but they've only won one of the opening four games and they've had a a bit of a decline over the past five years, and I think they're slowly following in the footsteps of clubs like Schalke, Werder and Hamburg, who have all suffered recent relegations from Bundesliga. Massive clubs who have been run badly, who have bought badly, and it just feels like Hertha are going to be the fourth big one in recent years to go down. So, yeah, you've got massive stadium, and I think you will have a decent budget to spend. They've spent a lot of money. They've got players like uh, Kevin prince Boateng. They've also got Pichek as well and a couple of other nice creative players in that squad. 
There's no reason why I think straight away, if you're half decent at the game, you can't turn them into European, champ- sort of like Champions League qualification contenders with the long-term prospect of really challenging Bayern for Bundesliga dominance. So there's, there's an easy one, probably the easiest one out of the lot, but definitely a sleeping giant in Hertha Berlin. Right, so now we're going to be moving to my stream save choice for FM22. I'll be streaming live here on YouTube Monday night and Saturday night around half past nine, ten o'clock. It is Gothenburg. Now, Gothenburg are a club, obviously in Sweden, where Sven Goran Eriksson made his name back in 1982, lifting the UEFA Cup, Sweden's only European trophy. And I'm pretty sure they won it with a lot of part time players as well. Now, they had a little bit of success as well with their Champions League semi final appearance in 93 and 95. But for the past 20 years, the club has not only struggled in Europe, has not left its mark in Europe, but have also struggled domestically. One of Sweden's biggest clubs with 13 league titles. However, it's been 14 years since the last league title win, which was back in 2007. With a 12th place finish in 2020, Marquis Ali Marek Hamzik didn't hang around and now once again the once regular title contenders are now looking at a little bit of a relegation scrap in 2021 a long-term save it is going to be for me build youth get them back into europe european football is gonna be vital get to get money in so you can reinvest in the squad and the infrastructure i think this is a definitely a build a nation save for football manager 2022 All right, boys, so they are my eight clubs to manage on FM22. I'm really excited to get the Gothenburg save coming. So once the full game drops, I think November the 9th, is it? We will start streaming that live twice a week, Mondays and Saturdays. Really excited to start with Gothenburg. I was hoping Hamzik was going to stay, but he's buggered off back. He's buggered off to Turkey. There's players like Sig Pawson, Marcus Berg, and Nicholas Alexanderson's son, um, Noah, in the squad but apart from that there's a lot of work to be done for that one let me know which of those eight have taken your fancy and as i said at the start of the video let me know who you're wanting to manage in fm22 that is it thanks for watching make sure you smash a like on today's video subscribe to the channel so much content coming for fm22 live streams a main let's play series as well in england with a lower league save with some exciting variables to it Really looking forward to that. Looking forward to the Gothenburg. And hopefully you will join me on the channel for FM22. Cheers, guys. Take care. See you later.